Alright, LCC 150D here, stats for informed decision making. We're going to look at chapter 14, and whew, it's a tough one, so you have to take your time, as I mentioned in the Blackboard assignment page. So it's an introduction to inference. Inference means that when you take your stats and you make sense of it, what do you infer from it? Okay, you make a decision. Well, how do you know you're close to being correct? So we're going to look at how confident you are. So I want you to think of it that way. Throughout this video and the next one, we're going to split this chapter into a couple of videos. I want you to think of yourself as the statistician. You're the one who's collecting the data. So here we go. So the first thing that you do is look at statistical inference, or inference, depends on what part of the country you come from. So it provides methods from draw, for drawing conclusions about a population. Remember, the population is everybody from sample data. So when you hear, especially around election time, that they took a sample poll and they did 3% error, margin of error, plus or minus, and so on, that's their confidence interval. They're telling you how confident they are that the numbers that they got are pretty well within a certain range. Now, that's what that's all about. So we're going to look at what that means. So when you say, oh, the average age of such and such a group that I surveyed is this and that means the population is that you have to be pretty well certain of how confident you are if you did a, that uh, research paper project you probably read some articles that had a, a p-value which we'll talk about in chapter in a later section um, about a hypothesis and how confident they were that what they got was pretty well within the population mean so we're going to talk about confidence intervals and what does the population mean and tests of significance. Okay, so those are some of the things that we'd be looking at in this chapter. So here are the things: simple conditions. Here are the simple conditions that we're going to talk about. Chapter 15 is a little bit more uh, uh, harder conditions. In other words, not harder, but uh, more complicated conditions. But we're going to simplify it here. So the stand, these uh, simple uh, random survey is from the population of interest okay it's from the population so think of a population uh, all male between 20 and 29 in the United States okay or all people all 308 million million people in the United States 308, 308 million people in the United States variable has a normal distribution so you should know what that means n that's normal parentheses and uh, mu is the going to be the population mean and the sigma is the population standard deviation. All right, so we don't, we can't survey every single person in the population that we're going to, talk, we're going to be talking about. So although the value of mu is unknown, okay, we don't know the population mean. The value of the population standard deviation sigma is known. So we know this. So that's what makes it simple. We don't know the mean, but we know the standard deviation. Okay. So there are two things for about confidence interval. A level C confidence interval has two parts okay it's an interval calculated from the data and it's an estimate plus a margin of error so that's one type of confidence interval then the other the confidence level C which is the probability that the interval will capture the true parameter parameter is at the population value that means population in repeated samples that sees the success rate for the method what the heck does this mean well let's look at the first one Okay, we have a study, a study, NAEP, National Assessment and Education Progress. All you young boys and girls out there, you probably took this test when you were in school. Okay, so we're going to look at the average score for all young adult males, okay, when they took the test. Now, this resource goes back to 1992, so some of you may have taken the test at that time. So these are quantitative scores, okay? It included a short test of quantitative skills, basic arithmetic, and unrealistic problems. So you probably enjoyed that day when you took those NEAPs. Scores on the test range from 0 to 500. Okay, They know the standard deviation of the population, all males, adult males, is 60. Okay, Remember that number. Now, you went and did a survey. You are the surveyor, the statistician. You took 840 men between 21 to 25 years of age that were in the NAP sample, and their mean quantitative score was 272. That was the sample mean, 272. So you want to estimate what the mean score of the population, mu, but you don't know mu, so you're going to estimate. And when you estimate, you got to see how confident you are, because there are 9.5 million young men of these ages. So you, you surveyed 840, and out of that 840, 
you're going to find a mean, and you're going to say it's pretty well than what the population is. Well, how do you know you're right? So you got to be confident about that. So this is what you do. So to estimate the unknown population mean, use the sample mean x bar to 72. All right? This is the sample. That's the population. The law of large numbers, recall from the previous chapter, says that the more people that you survey, the closer your mean comes to the mean of the population. But there's some error. We didn't talk about that last chapter. Now it's time to talk about it. So the sampling distribution, x bar, that's your average of your sample, has the normal distribution with mean u, mu, okay, we don't know that, and standard deviation. Now we're going to find the standard deviation of our sample. And if you recall, we had this formula. This is the standard deviation of the population, 60. And our number of people, which is 840, we take the square root. We approximately get 2.1. So if you did the math, you'd get 2.1 as the sample standard deviation. Okay? So here's the sample standard deviation. What does that mean? Well, if you go back to the normal curve, the, stand, the standard deviation, 1 standard deviation, 2.1 there. Okay? This is our mean that we don't know. So we're saying that our standard deviation is 2.1 away from the mean. All right? And if you go to two standard deviations, remember from the 68, 95, 99.7 rule way back when, that if you went two standard deviations away right here, which is 2 times 2.1, 4.2, 4.2 there, 4.2 there, your mean comes about, you have 95% probability that your mean falls in here. The population mean, I should say. The population mean falls in here. Okay, and look what it the vary, the varies from. If you take the population, uh, the sample uh, mean, which is 272, that you found a while back, subtract 4.2, you get 267.8, and if you add 276.2, so that means that you can say, you can estimate that the mu of the population lies within 4.2 of the x bar, you'll be right about 95% of the time. So 95% of the time, it falls in here. So let's look at a, a, a problem in the book. This is on uh, on page 360. BMI, body mass index, a lot of you, a lot of us, we all love that number. Um, and uh, you can look it up as to how it's uh, found. It's right here. But uh, adults with BMI less than 18.5 are underweight. Those that are over 25 may be overweight and even higher than that. I think it's 30. It's about obese. Morbidly be. So let's look at young women. Of course, you have to look at young women. And there's an NAH, NES. This is the, the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. And they, they surveyed 654 women. They found that the average of the sample was 26.8. Now, there are 18 million women in this age group. So they're going to estimate the populations of this, this population's mean, BMI, right? So, they, we're going to look at simple conditions. That means we don't know the population mean, but we do know the standard deviation sigma of the population 7.5. We need that for that formula. Okay? So, we're going to see. So, those are the numbers. 26.8 is our mean. How close is it to the population mean? Well, let's see. First, we do the standard deviation here of our sample. So, you're going to take that. That's the 7.5 right there. 7.5. And then we surveyed 654 women. Do the math, you get 0.3. Okay? So 0.3 rounded off. Now I found this site's integrative graph here. You can just uh, Google normal curve, interactive normal curve. And uh, it's, it gives you a pretty well, uh, I, good idea of how it looks. So remember, 26.8 is our mean and 0.3. So if I go back to here, I put 26.8 here. And 0.3 is my standard deviation. It keeps moving. It doesn't get settled in. So I'm going to go two standard deviations right here. Okay? And if you look up at uh, this, it's 95%. If I go right back over here, you can see shaded area, 95%. So it's about 95%. So if I do the math and I add 0.3 and I subtract 0.3 to 26.8 on both sides, then I get 27.4 and 26.2. Okay, so that's my range. So I can say that the population mean is within here for, under repeated conditions. It's between 26.2 and 27.4. That's what 95% accuracy, confidence, I should say. I'm sorry, confidence. Okay, so that's what that section is all about. So that's basically what you've done here. 
and what we've done with women in this section. Okay, now I'm going to uh, stop here and uh, look at the next section on another video.